There's been quite a bit of discourse and discussion over what the story of Security Breach was supposed to be before most of its unfinished remains were carved out, leaving a gaping hole in the second and third act. This has led into speculation of Ruin bringing back some of these features and effectively solving the story that Security Breach sought to tell, revealing the big aha that makes the story complete. But we are never truly going to get the real story of Security Breach without one of the major plot points that was scrapped in the final hour, something that would have changed not only the feel of the game entirely, but would have likely changed audiences' opinions of the characters after the fact, and would have fleshed Security Breach out into one of the most emotionally charged and terrifying FNAF games. And that is the shattering of Glamrock Freddy. For a little backstory, as you probably know, Glamrock Freddy is a major character in Security Breach. The companion of the playable character, Gregory, Freddy is the only friendly animatronic who's out to help him and isn't out of their right mind or completely apathetic to his plight. Over the course of Security Breach, Freddy's bandmates are decommissioned, or shattered, and they become their shattered variants. However, Freddy too was supposed to share this fate. Now, before you think this is just an idea or an assumption of some kind, Shattered Freddy was a very real thing. We not only have his name and files and his visage repurposed for other uses, but we have a slew of voice lines that lay out the events of his shattering and his preceding hunt for Gregory. Let's start with that audio, because that audio is the skeleton that holds everything together. Now, I've played this audio before in a past video, so you might be familiar with it. I bet you're wondering how Freddy gets shattered, likely thinking that Gregory betrays Freddy or something of the like, or that there's an accident or a burn trap possession situation. But no, the audio lays out this scenario quite well. Gregory and Freddy are somewhere when shattered Chica, Monty, and Roxanne show up. Freddy tells Gregory to run as this exchange occurs. Gregory, run! Do not look back! Do not watch! Chica, Roxy, Monty, do not listen! Resist her! Please, you do not want to do this! No, stop! No, please! We then get to Freddy's anguished screams. Notably, they sound nothing like his daycare attendant Sony scream in the final game. <laughs> For a note, here's the scream in the final game. There is an audio line of Gregory crying for a long period of time. There's been some speculation that that line was supposed to be when Freddy was taken by Moon, but I think it's abundantly clear that it was likely taken from this encounter where Freddy is utterly massacred. Leave him alone! <laughs> <laughs> but what happens after this point? Well, we have a clue with Shattered Freddy's continued voice lines. Superstar, where are you? Where are you going? Come back. I thought we were friends. Why do you hide? Gregory. Yeah, so Shattered Freddy becomes corrupted and begins to hunt Gregory as well. And Freddy is a formidable foe, especially since this is after he has all of his upgrades, as shown in his model. Gregory unintentionally built the perfect predator by using those parts. And in his broken body, Shattered Freddy fits the bill perfectly. How the ending would have gone after this is unclear, though personally, I wonder if the Vanny boss battle, you know, the one where you run through two hallways and confront Vanny, would have involved being hunted by Freddy through Phaser Blast. That would have been utterly diabolical, and would have actually made sense for why, for some reason, Vanny's boss fight is stationed in Phaser Blast. In fact, the whole fight her, resist her, don't listen to what she's telling you to do. This thing would have fit seamlessly in the Freddy gets disassembled by Vanny scene. 
down to the point where Shattered Freddy is the design used for Freddy after the staff bots get him, even though the staff bots are shown pulling him apart. Speaking of which, let's go over Shattered Freddy's design. It is featured in two places, as I said, the disassembled ending, and in a banner for a Halloween sale. I can understand why it was reused for the ending, but I find it peculiar that they just, I don't know, put it up on a Halloween banner. Uh, oh well. Freddy's hands have been damaged, revealing sharp claws underneath. His face has been disfigured, revealing a garish bear-like maw. His legs look like Monty's, considering that Monty's broken legs were classified as Shattered Freddy's legs. And his chest is torn apart, leaving his stomach hatch, the safety spot Gregory could always rely on, unusable. Every Shattered Glamrock has a relation between their fatal flaw, their injury, and their shattered form. Chica cannot control her appetite. Her upgrade is in her mouth, and her shattered form steals both that and her favored vice. Roxanne is fixated on her appearance, on her ego, self-consciously staring into a mirror and talking to herself. Her face is ruined, and now she has lost her greatest treasure, her looks, and her one assurance. As we went over in the Monty video, Monty's upgrade was initially his legs, so going on with that, Monty is powerful with legs that he can jump and pounce with, to possibly kick through fences and destroy rooms with, and his anger is unmatched. But it consumes him, and now he doesn't have a leg to stand on. He's helpless. Freddy's fatal flaw is in his good nature, his willingness to protect and take care of someone who Vanny has chosen to die to fulfill Afton's eternal bloodlust, to the point where Freddy is willing to go against his band. While he seems shocked at receiving their upgrades, Freddy does go so far as to steer Gregory to find a way to stop Roxy. The child came first. His promise to protect him came first. And that's admirable. It was his heart. And his bandmates were sure to tear that to pieces. And with that gone, Vanny finally bypasses safe mode and takes control of Freddy. All while perhaps traumatizing Gregory in the process, as Aft intended to do with his victims. And playing in the shoes of Gregory, watching the sweet and cute and a little ditzy Freddy dissolve into a monster like his bandmates would be downright nightmarish. You can hear it in his slow, slurred words, calling out for Gregory, calling out for his superstar. Freddy is no longer in control. Is he just confused, or is he not there at all, just luring Gregory in with friendship and safety, like Chica was offering up candy? Indeed, Shattered Freddy would have changed Five Nights at Freddy's forever. This would have set a new standard, because as much as I love Glamrock Freddy, this story element is fantastic. Plus, I think it would have given Glamrock Freddy a shot at being even more of a popular character. People would have eaten this up with a spoon. I Can Fix Him would have surged in in full. And you know what? If this happened, then I would have been behind Gregory maybe becoming a villain. Because now it's not, oh, Afton possession, or just having Gregory be Afton with another name, of the Undertale effect of blame the child, the quirky characters are always right. It's because Gregory suddenly has a motive. The only person who has ever been good to Gregory is now gone. And likely, Frasbear Entertainment is just going to replace him with a copy who is not him. And who doesn't even know that previous Freddy existed. And Vanessa's just going to get away with it. And Afton's going to be back again sometime. So Gregory at this point deciding, screw it, I'm gunning for everybody, and I don't care who gets caught in the crossfire, makes sense. It would align with the one you shouldn't have killed's motive as like a parallel or a callback. Alas, that potential is pretty much gone, because I don't see a way that you could bring back Shattered Freddy now. I mean, you could, but I don't see it being possible in this specific context. Like, if he reappears in Ruin, I doubt they'll have a scene of his bandmates tearing him apart, especially considering that they censored mentioning blood in the final security breach cut. My point is that we're past the we're past this point in the story. It would be weird to suddenly take a step back. Even though Security Breach's true ending leaves a lot to be desired. I don't think I've really discussed this at length, but Security Breach's true final ending is kind of a fumble. I mean, I've been critical of Burn Trap, but not counting him 
The hardest and most time accumulating ending in Security Breach is the most disappointing. Every one of the jokish endings have more in them than it does. In the van ending, Gregory and Freddy escape in a van. Freddy powers down. Gregory figures out how to jump him and the two take off into the sunset. In the prize corner ending, Freddy sets the place on fire, tackles Vanny off a building, and then we get a reveal of her true identity. Even in the official bad ending, or what would basically be the bad ending, which is just Gregory leaving, even that reveals his state of homelessness, reveals that the Pizzaplex has had other victims, and that Vanny is a constant threat that stretches outside the walls of Freddy's when she follows him out. I've heard one of the arguments against Gregory being, why did he have to shatter the animatronics? Why didn't he just hide somewhere and leave? And while that is a viable point, apparently Vanny would have just followed him out the door anyway. So, there was no real escape from the Pizzaplex, I suppose. Unless he took Vanny down before he left. But, um, yeah, I digress. In the true ending, Freddy and Gregory somehow run out of the sinkhole, dozens of feet under the Pizzaplex, on the other side of a one-way elevator, and make it outside to a grassy hill. And then it stops. At this point, I wouldn't be shocked if Ruin revealed that Freddy and Gregory didn't escape and died together in that hole. And this is just the afterlife. This is Fazbear Hills from FNAF World. Well, actually, I would be shocked. I don't know if FNAF has the cojones to go with that one. But I would find it hilarious if, like, this was a major plot point in Ruin, and that Gregory and Freddy have just been living in that sinkhole for the last 10 years since the Pizzaplex collapsed, and that the DLC is just this girl realizing they're down there and calling 911 to get them out. Gregory comes out with a hobo beard and has become even more of a hermit, while Freddy's especially dirty. He comes out looking like Swamp Freddy. So where I was going with this, somewhere off of how Shattered Freddy really was a one-time plot development, and it's a shame we missed out because I definitely think of all the things they could have done with Security Breach to make it feel impactful, it had to be this. One of the biggest things about this Shattered... Okay, this part is entirely off script, so if this sounds a little weird, let me get this out here. Recently, like in the games and in the books, one of the biggest problems with FNAF's plot in recent times has been that all of the big emotional mo- there's no emotional moments. All the big shocks and twists are all kind of like explanatory twists. They're not- we don't see something happen. We don't feel something happen. We just kind of get it told back to us. And in fact, most of the FNAF emotional moments throughout the years have been told back to us. Pizzeria Simulator's big emotional moment was Henry telling us what was happening, not us seeing it. The only time I can really think of, well, I can think of FNAF 4's ending, but the one time I can think of where we had an actual emotional moment in FNAF that wasn't being explained to us and was being shown to us was the Happiest Day minigame in FNAF 3. This Shattered Freddy segment is so important because this would have been a self-contained plot point that didn't require any explanation outside of this game to have the full weight and emotional impact and horror factor surrounding it. It was a self-contained plot point. It was a self-contained story arc. And sometimes, even in games where the story crosses over for various games, you have to have something like that happen. Because if you don't, there is no story. And that's kind of what happened with Security Breach, was that there was just so much cut that there isn't a story. There, I mean, there's parts of a story, but there's not an impactful story. The thing is, I've heard people ask about my feelings on Gregory. I, and not Gregory, GGY. Um, I don't feel like there is any way you could introduce GGY and Evil Gregory into Ruin and not have it feel like an exposition dump and have it feel like a genuine movement of the plot and not just like something that someone written in. And the reason why is because Security Breach should have built up to that and the one way you could have done that is by having the Shattered Freddy section in there and that's gone. That's 
This is the one thing you should have had in this game. Why is this gone? A lot of people have problems with security breaches, um, having Freddy be a friend and not being scary. This whole Shattered Freddy segment would have fixed all of that, and it wouldn't have just fixed all of that, but suddenly, Freddy being friendly has a greater plot relevance. It's not just Freddy's friendly because Freddy's friendly. Freddy's friendly because this plot starts out as a comedy and ends as a tragedy. But I digress. I kind of went off there a little bit. And it's a shame because I don't see Shattered Freddy ever coming back. I would be shocked if Glamrock Freddy comes back after Ruin. But, except for like compilation pieces. So, the fact that there was such this well thought out plot point that didn't get to go anywhere, it kind of, it's, it's a real shame. I hope at least in the games going forward, they try to go with a bold plot point like this again. Because, let me tell you something, Shattered Freddy would have blown the burn trap reveal out of the water. But uh, I digress again. Anyway, that's the story of Shattered Freddy. Thank you for watching. Leave him alone! Gregory, run! Do not look back! Do not watch! Chica, Roxy, Monty, do not listen! Resist her! Please, you do not want to do this. Disassemble, Freddy. No, stop. No, please. <laughs> oh.